This is admittedly not as exciting as recent videos, but it is a very welcome quality of life improvement. The last couple weeks, I've been prototyping and testing out a 3D printed tool rack for my machine. And while I still have a few things that need tweaking and tuning, and I think I'm going to change the design, the guts of the system are in place. My macros currently support two modes of operation. The first allows you to fetch and replace a specific tool. So it grabs the tool, brings it up front so you can manually change it, and then takes it back to probe the offset. My tool setter is a full three-dimensional tool setter, so it can do both height and diameter probing. At the moment, I'm only doing height offsets, but in the future, I'll probably add diameter offsets as well. The second mode is a traditional M6 tool change where it switches one tool to another during runtime and then probes the offset of the new tool as well. So let's talk about the tool rack a little bit because it is a bit different than you normally see on kind of gantry style routers. It's similar in concept to the quote unquote wine rack tool racks that you'll see on machines like this. But it is obviously a little bit different in that it's 3D printed and the tool holder sits in a pocket rather than being held on by some kind of fork mechanism. If I'm honest with myself, I did this because I have a crippling inability to do anything the easy way. But more practically, this allows me to cram more tools in the back of the router, which I wouldn't normally be able to do with just the fork mounts. In the X direction, the packing density is about the same as fork mounts because this is really limited by the size of your spindle and how much clearance you have on either side of the spindle. But in the Y direction, you can get a set of tools much closer than you would with forks because you can lift directly out of the pocket rather than having to pull back on the fork. The current tool rack configuration holds 12 tools across the back, a probe, and a 3-inch face mill that I'm going to use as a single point fly cutter. If I didn't have the fly cutter, then I could actually get about 16 tools on here without trying too hard. Uh, the face mill just takes up a lot of space. The whole tool rack takes up about five inches of the back, which is roughly equivalent to how big the forks would also take up. So essentially I can get 12 to 14 tools in the same amount of space that I'd probably get six or seven tools with the forks. So double the capacity. So it took a few iterations to get to a design that worked as far as dimensions and clearances and also a design that I liked and printed relatively quickly. So you can see the first designs were much boxier in nature, which I eventually moved away from because it just uses a lot of plastic and increases the print time for no real reason. The extra space in between the pockets is essentially wasted. It doesn't support any load, doesn't really add much stiffness because it has a low infill. And so it's essentially just extra print time and extra plastic for no reason. The ISO 30 and BT30 tool holders that I'm using are flush and straight on the sides. There's no lip to sit on. And so what that means is these pockets are designed so that the tool holder and kind of the collet to some degree sit on the edge of the internal pocket and then the hole inside the pocket allows the tool to reach down. And this will work fine for my setup because I don't envision myself ever using any tool, say, wider than half an inch and longer than two to three inches. If I need something like that, I can do a, a one-off tool, but for the standard tools that I'll be using, they should be relatively small and sit inside this pocket without a problem. The tool rack is modular in nature to make it easy to print and also easy to customize. And so the last module, which isn't currently mounted on the router, is, is custom designed for the probe and for the face mill that I mentioned earlier. The reason it's not currently mounted is that I just messed up the height of the uh, face mill and it, it doesn't fit under the gantry at the moment. So I need to redesign this. I did consider other options rather than a linear rack bolted directly to the machine. Uh, the most obvious alternative is the round carousel or umbrella style rack. I decided not to do this because wiring up the steppers and the homing switches and the code just seemed more complicated than I wanted to deal with. And I want to use my ATC and not build another project. Which brings us to the software side of things, I think. So I'm using Mach 4 as my control software. And as you can see here, I've built a custom tab on my default screen set, which handles kind of tool changes and probing. In the top left, I have the tool information 
group panel, which I lifted from down below in the default screen set. So it shows you the current tool, a the indicator for the current offsets, and then a flashing light if you're in the middle of an M6. Below that, I have the tool change buttons for replacing and changing. So as you saw in the very intro, the replace button will take the tool and bring it up to the front of the machine so that you can manually change the tool, say if you're swapping it out for a different job. Um, this has logic so that if the current tool is not selected, so say tool five is selected at the moment, but you would like to replace tool seven, it will first do an M6 to switch the tool for you and then bring you tool seven. The change button is basically just an M6, so it'll switch from the current tool to the selected tool. And after both of those operations, it will do a probing routine to figure out the height offset. The middle panel is a custom Lua panel that populates with the current set of tools that you have defined. So the tool information is pulled from a CSV file that you keep next to the scripts. It has the tool numbers, the tool names, which you punch in yourself, and then the X, Y, and Z position of the pockets for the tool rack. Theoretically, the pockets are all the same distance from each other in all different directions. And so I could have populated this by finding and probing the first pocket and then just doing offsets to all the other pockets. But I didn't quite trust myself or my 3D printer that much, so I went through and manually probed out all the different pockets to get their exact X and Y position. Uh, the Z positions are just copied and pasted because they just need to be close enough. The height and diameter columns are pulled from the tool table itself, and so these will get updated with offsets as tools are populated. And then finally on the right, there's a tool setter box, which controls the settings for the tool setter. So you can change how high it is off the table, it's offset, how far you'd like to probe and retract and that sort of thing. And then there's a button that just does a single probing cycle. So this is sometimes handy if you pop a tool in manually and would like to probe it real quick without having to go through the whole replace or change routines. Generally, the macros and the tool rack have been fairly reliable, but there are some lingering issues that I'd like to address in a version two. I have two different brands of tool holders, and they're slightly different dimensions when you snug up the collet, leading one to be a little taller than the other. This is an exaggerated case where there's no tool and I just tightened the collet nut fully, uh, but you can see that in this case it actually fails to grab the tool holder. This happens a lot less after I did tuning to find kind of the optimal Z depth for both of the, the two tiers, but it still worries me that it could happen. So for example, in this clip, it grabs the tool, but it doesn't fully engage it. So you can actually pop the tool out by hand, which is obviously very dangerous if this were to happen while it's actually running. I have some ideas about how to fix this. If the floor of each pocket sat on a compression spring, that would allow it to give a little bit rather than being kind of a fixed rigid point. That would allow the spindle to overshoot a little bit on purpose, which would naturally accommodate slightly taller or shorter tool holders. Another option is to take advantage of the fixture mounts on the tool holder, so the, the point where the forks are supposed to attach. That would guarantee that all of the tool holders at identical heights because they're all attached at the same location and then you don't have any of these problems because they are essentially identical from that point upwards. Overall this has been a lot more challenging than I expected mainly because the clearance between the gantry and the z-axis are quite small as you can see here and so everything has to be just precisely placed and to get optimal packing of all the tool holders I had to fiddle around a lot to get them just right. Also there were well, a few close calls with programming mistakes. So it's been a little fiddly, but overall it's working. It's starting to shape up. It's at a point where I trust it enough to actually use, at least use enough to make its replacement a version two, which I think I will do in some combination of metal and plastic rather than fully 3D printed. If folks are interested in my screen set and macros for Mach 4, just let me know down in the comments. I'm happy to clean up the code and toss it up on GitHub for folks to grab. The 3D models for the tool rack itself are probably less useful because it's very specific to the dimensions of my machine. Uh, but if there's interest, I could probably put those up on Thingiverse or something as well. Slowly but surely, this machine is starting to get put together and I think we'll start cutting some real projects soon. Thanks for watching.